Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. It's your brother Joshua back with another quick coffee break, right? And a quick affirmation for the people and the truth, man. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and right, I wanted to come before brothers and sisters today to remind brothers and sisters to have compassion on the lowly, man, of your people. Have compassion on your brothers and sisters in these last days. Right, we have to show more compassion towards our people that are walking without because the time is getting short. And yes, we urge our people to, you know, repent and stand up and fight and come out of the world. Right. But then we have to go back and remember before we came into this truth and the knowledge of the most high. And even when we first came into it, how we walk towards the Lord how we done certain things, right? How we carried ourselves. And we wasn't so quick to hop on and do everything in righteousness, right? That it took us a little time to develop the understanding and the knowledge and apply those things to our lives, right? And also that we were once in situations that, you know, maybe we didn't have much of anything, you know, and maybe we were homeless at times or whatever, you know, compassion goes into many different ways, right, of showing charity towards one another, right, and um, it's a nation thing, it's building a nation, it's loving our own, and that's what it's all about, it's all about conducting ourselves and being like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man, being exactly like him, having that mind and following him as he was that example for us that we should be, right, in these last days, right? So <clears throat> let me get this quick precept real quick in First Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, and it reads, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his foot, his steps, right? Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, man, right? So we have to be that example like Christ was for us, right? Having no guile found in our mouth, no trickery, no foolishness, right? Guiding our people in righteousness and truth and giving them the wisdom, those that are especially without the light right now, right? And being that example and walking after the ways that he showed us in this truth, man, right? And right now we're speaking about having compassion on those that are walking without because there's still so many of us that are walking without the light, that are still in a dark place, that still don't understand what's going on, that still may look at you as a foolish man or weird or whatever you're doing for the Lord, you're over-righteous, whatever, right? They just don't understand these things, man. But right, we have to walk in a, in a way towards our people to give them example of how they should be to get them out of that, man. You know, to have compassion on our people. Right. So I'm going to get this real quick in Zechariah <coughs> chapter seven and verse number nine. And it says, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, say, execute true judgment. And show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. Right? So the Lord said, execute true, true judgments, right? And show mercy and compassion on every man and his brother. Right? The job is to execute the true judgment, right? To judge the people according to the most high's laws, right? Telling them their sins, the things that they are doing wrong in the sight of the Lord. Right. Executing that truly. That's the true judgment. Right. Saying, hey, you shouldn't be out there serving other gods. Right. You shouldn't be out there defiling your temple or or dealing with somebody else's wife. Right. And things of that nature. Executing that true judgment. But at the same time, having compassion on them because you were once in that situation where you were in darkness and you didn't know what was going on or how to follow the Lord and true right so we're trying to pull them out of the fire by having compassion and telling them these things now sometimes you know you do have to 
you know, be stern with our people because the Lord called us stiff necked and hard headed people, man, who we truly are. But at the same time, understand that you were once in that position where you were in the, the you didn't know. Right. You didn't have the understanding. And our, our people are suffering from the lack of knowledge for what we've done from falling away from the commandments and the laws of the most high God. So the whole head is sick and is in need of a physician. And the Lord has sent out the so-called spiritual physicians in these last days through the hands of his men, the prophets out there on the highways and hedges and those that teach, right, the truth of the Bible and of the Most High to bring back and bring that healing back to our people, right? So the Lord said, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, execute true judgment and show mercy, compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. Let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Right? So we're not supposed to imagine evil in our hearts against our brothers. You're not supposed to wish death on your brothers or your sisters that's out here doing wickedness, man. Right? We all hope that Israel would come to repentance to the Lord. And that's our job to give them that spiritual food to nourish them up and bring them back to the most high in righteousness by having compassion and telling them, openly rebuking them in righteousness, right? Pulling them out of that fire, trying to save their life. Like Ezekiel 3 and 17 tells us that we're sent to give the warning to them, right? Let me read that real quick. All right, I'm going to read that real quick. Right, <clears throat> then I'm gonna go back to that. All right, so this is Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17, and it reads, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from, the, from his wicked way and save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his wickedness, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So the job is for you to reach out and warn the people and tell them the wickedness that they're doing to save them out of that fiery flame, that indignation, that destruction that's coming, that sure death, right? <clears throat> and he says, if you don't warn them, then he's going to require that blood at your hand if they should happen to die in their wickedness and you had the opportunity to do so. But it says, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So you have an opportunity to deliver your soul from that foolishness, that wickedness, right? If you warn your people and that's have compassion and love on your people by telling them where they're going off. Right. And being able to get them out of that fire. Just the same as Yahweh Shai, whom the world calls Christ, did for you when he looked upon you, when you were in your darkest moments, when he looked upon you, when you were wallowing in your sin, you were down in, in the mud and you were doing all manner of wickedness in the darkness. Right. The Lord had compassion on you to see something inside of you to grab a hold of you and bring you out of that darkness into the light. So should you be right. Let's get a precept. Let's go back to Ezekiel. Right. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16. <clears throat> We're going to start at first number four. And it says, yeah, come verse four. And it says, and as for the nativity in the day. Thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou hast not salted all at all, nor swaddled at all, right? So when you was born in the light, when you were coming out of that and being that transition from out of that darkness to the light, man, you wasn't all the way clean yet. You wasn't all the way washed, right? Your navel wasn't even cut yet. You weren't even swaddled in those clothes, right? And comforted 
into this truth yet. You were still in some of your wickedness. You was in your wicked ways. You were still doing some of the same things that you partook of in the world, man. Right? And it says, none I pity thee. There was no pity for you in that time. And it says, to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. So Yahweh so said, look, when I seen you in your wickedness, when I seen you doing all manner of foolishness, right? When I seen you struggling in your in, in worldly endeavors and, you know, doing whatever you were doing in the world, I seen you and I called you out of that and I told you to live. I breathed that breath of life in you, man. I had pity and compassion on you when nobody else did. But when I passed over you, I saw that and I pulled you out of that, right? Because the Lord had compassion on you to do these things, man. And he delivered you because you was poor and you was at a poor state. You were struggling. You didn't know. You were destroyed for that lack of knowledge. You didn't understand who the Most High was. But Yahweh Shai seen you and he pitied you. And he said, you know what? I'm going to pull you out of that fire, man. And I'm going to bring you unto me. Right? So you can have that safe haven and be passionate upon your neighbors and be able to give them the living waters that your people need. Right? This is what the Most High did for us. Right? He heard your cry, your moaning in the dark. He understood that you were suffering in certain things. So therefore, he had compassion upon you and brought you out of that. Right? Let's get another precept. Let's go to the book of Job real quick. I think it's Job 29 and verse 12. And it reads, Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy, man. Right? So the Lord said, because I delivered the poor that cried. And the fatherless and him that had none to help him, man. That's what the Lord did for you. Right? You were at one point, you were fatherless. Because you didn't know the father. Right? You were just out in the world, living in darkness, man. Right? You were in a poor, low estate. You didn't have the spirit. You didn't have the knowledge, the understanding. And even on a carnal level, you maybe not had the, the credentials or the money or whatever to sustain you in your ways, man. You could have very well been a beggar, man, or anything. The Lord seen that, and he had compassion on you, and he brought you into his chambers, and he supped with you. And he gave you the nourishment, the bread of life and the spiritual water to drink to build you up. So therefore, you can have compassion on your brothers and your sisters and bring them up. Because you were sick at one point and you didn't have the spiritual money, right, to go to that physician to be built up, to be back in uh, uh, proper health. But the Lord looked upon you and had passion compassion on you and said, you know what, look, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take care of my son or my daughter and I'm going to build them up so therefore they can build up their brothers and their sisters, man, in that time that they are needy, right? So much so that you should be doing as well, All right? So let's get another precept real quick. Let's go to Psalms real quick, right? I like this one right here. Let's go to Psalms. 72 and verse number 12 it says for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth the poor also and him that have no helper he shall spare the poor and needy and shall save souls of the needy see that right 
the Lord said, for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, man. Right. And there's so many of us still out here crying. That's a very much in need of the compassions and the mercy of the Lord, man, to get us out of this state. We're all in captivity, man. We're all in mourning. We're all distressed. Right. We're all, you know, a lot of us are, 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 are spiritually discerned, man. We don't know who we are. Right. We don't know who our God is. We don't know who to cry to when things get rough. Right. We're pinned against one another, man. We're conditioned. Right. To hate one another. Right. All these things, man, we're conditioned in these churches and things to actually go away from our God instead of getting closer to the most high. Right. In sincerity and in truth, we're all impoverished in these last days, man. And we need that physical and spiritual help. We're the needy and we cried out to the most high. He had compassion on us and delivered us from these stresses. So therefore you have to do the same thing, being that example that Christ set for you to be that example, to go out and reach out to your people and do so. Cause you know, we get a bad rap. All them Israelites, man, they, they just want to argue and yell and, and, and they rude and all that. No, sometimes you have to meet your people at a level that they are so they can get these things. But a lot of times they miss the fact of, you know, the approach is very much compassionate. And sometimes compassion is not always what you want it to be. It's not always nice and, and, and calm and, and mellow voices and, 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 oh, it's okay. No, sometimes you have to get in their chest and rebuke them righteously to pull them out of that, man. Right? Check this out. Let me get this real quick. Uh, so I rack, I think, 20. Khan, it says, so this is the book of Iraq, chapter 20, verse 1. It says, There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly, and he that confesseth his fault shall be preserved from hurt. How good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance? For so shall thou escape willful sin. Right? So, Sometimes the reproof is not comely. It's not a beautiful thing. It's not all soft and things of that nature. Sometimes you have to get to that level, you know, of those hard-headed brothers and sisters that don't want to listen and get into there and, and get them out of there and save them from that fire, man. That's actually compassion, man, on your brother, right? Check this out real quick. Let me get this real quick, then I'm going to get back to it, right? This is the book of Jude, right? This is Jude. Verse number, verse 21, it says, Keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, loving, I mean, Salaki, looking for mercy of our Lord Amashiach Yahweh Shai unto ter, eternal life. And some having compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Because sometimes you can have compassion and just be soft and, hey, give the word and some receive it with joy. But some, you kind of got to give it to them raw, man, because they don't want to get the truth. And then you tell them, look, if you don't turn from your evil ways, if you don't repent and stop what you're doing, then the Lord is going to put you to death. And it's that simple. Sometimes that reproof is not comely how you like it. But guess what? That's love and that's compassion from one brother to the next to save you out of that fire, to get you eternal life, man. And that's what the whole thing is. And you got to reciprocate that energy by, hey, being forgiven. People that come at you certain ways or, you know, talk down on you, things of that nature, man, Terrell Burr and things like that. You got to be forgiven. That's another form of compassion. Right. There's too much hatred among our people towards one another. We hate one another. We, we despise one another, man. We look upon one another with with disgust and, and, and all type of hatred, man. But 
we expect some type of compassion from the Lord. The Lord said, no, it don't work like that. If you can't love and forgive your brother, then you, how do you expect me to do that? Just like the Lord said, paraphrasing, how can you say, I love God, whom you have not seen, but hate your brother? Man, you're a murderer. You're a liar if you hate your brother. Right. But you say you love God. That's you're lying to yourself. You're deceiving your own self, man. The Lord said, if you have compassion on your brother, I will return that favor and have compassion on you, man. Right. Check this out. Right. Let's get the precept on that. Right. This is Sirach chapter 28. And we'll start at verse three. And it says, one man beareth hatred against another and doeth he seek pardon from the Lord. He showeth no mercy to a man, which is like himself, and doeth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? If he that is but flesh nourished hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Remember thy end and let enmity cease. Remember corruption and death and abide in the commandments, man. You have to remember that. You have to know that, look, you was once in that state. You were the, the, the backbiter, the tail bearer, the, the brawler, the, the one that looked at your brother with hatred. You were once at that level, right? And you found it a way to come out of that. Now you can forgive. Now you have to look at your brother the same way. Okay, he's destroyed. He's going through the same things I did, right? He may have came against me and crossed me, but guess what? The Lord said I have to uh, uh, forgive him 70 times 70, right? So remember, that's the whole point of showing mercy, that you may receive mercy as well because you can't be one way and think you're going to come out clean on the other end. No, the Lord delights in balance, right? The Lord delights in balance, and a false balance is abomination unto him. So if you're lukewarm and you got one foot in and one foot out and you've been that way, then he's going to spew you out, man. He, got, he don't have no use for you in that sense, right? So you have to have that righteous balance of showing compassion in order to receive that. Because the Lord said, look, if you show compassion on your brother, then I'm going to reciprocate that energy to you. I'm going to show you the same thing, man. I'm not going to keep my wrath and my anger against you forever. If you return to me and get out of your sins in the ways of your own heart, then I will show compassion on you. And he expects you to be the same. Because what if you done something wrong and the Lord kept his anger forever? Then you're in trouble. There's nothing to save you. You can't nobody deliver you out of the most high's hands. You'll be in trouble. So the Lord said, if you have compassion on your people, then I'm going to have compassion on you. Right? Let's get a precept real quick. Let's go to the book of Micah real quick and get a few more. Right. It's the book of Micah. All right. Let me get that real quick. So lock you. All right. This is the book of Micah. Chapter three. Uh, it's lock you. I want chapter seven. And verse number. Uh, I started 18 It says Who is a God like unto thee That pardoneth iniquity And passeth by the transgressions Of the remnant of his inheritance Slocky his heritage <laughs> He retaineth not his anger forever Because he delighteth in mercy Right I'm going to read that one more time right it says, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. The Lord delights in mercy, man. The Lord is merciful and full of compassion, man, and long suffering. So should you be. Right. And it says, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. 
and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou wilt perform the truth of Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old, man. So the Lord is going to forget all those iniquities, man. He's going to cast all that stuff into the deep, right? And have compassion on you because he delights in the compassion, man. And that's exactly how we have to model ourselves after um, uh, Yahweh Shem Yahushai, man. If we expect to get any mercy from the Lord, we should have mercy upon our people, man, the same way. All right, let me get one more precept. Let's go to 1 Peter, man. All right. Let's go to 1 Peter. All right, chapter 3. Verse number 8, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous, man. <laughs> see that? We got to be one mind towards one another, man. When we look at our brothers, we should see ourselves, man. We look at our nation that's destroyed. We look at our people that's down in the dirt, in the dust, and completely uh, destroyed in the mind and the spirit, we should have compassion on them, man, and give them a hand up and, and impute that wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that was given unto us unto them that we can water that tree that it can grow, <laughs> right? We cannot leave our brothers out here destitute without anything, right? Of course, everybody's not going to accept it. Everybody's not going to be on the same level. Everybody's not going to even, you know, listen to it. But your job is still to give that compassion first and let the Lord handle the rest, man. Right? So let's get one more real quick and I'm going to close it out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 2 and it reads, And though... I have a gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Right. I'm going to read that one more time and let this seek in. First Corinthians 13 and two. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith. Though the Lord has given you all these gifts, though you're able to go out and prophesy, though you have the understanding of the sto of the, uh, the the precepts, right? And the mysteries and the dark parables and sayings, right? And though you have knowledge and you have faith in Yahweh Shai, though you possess all these things, he says, so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. So if you possess all these gifts from the Lord and you lack charity towards your brothers and your sisters, you're regarded as nothing in the eyes of the Lord, man. It means absolutely nothing, man. So having compassion, a form of charity, mercy on your people is a beautiful balance in the eyes of your how about Shem Yahushua, man. Right? So that's the message for the day. Have compassion on your people and love your own. But with that, giving our honor and glory to you. How about Shem Yahushai? Hope it was edifying. Love you, Israel. Kom Yahshua Allah. Shalom.